Uh, so we're going back to the mid early 1990s now, and we didn't have the tools to manipulate human cells. We could barely change one gene. Uh, but in yeast, we could change a gene overnight. And so, you know, kids like me in my early 20s, we learned genetics using baker's yeast. Um, and on the side, we would make beer and meat in, in the warm room. So that was an added bonus. But yeast cells are eukaryotes. They have 16 chromosomes um, or 32 if they mate uh, and fuse. And they actually function very similar to our own cells. And, and that sounds crazy, right? Because this is a fungus versus a, a mammalian uh, animal like us. But the basic building blocks of how life works, very similar. Uh, they have linear chromosomes, not, not like bacteria, which are circular. They get hungry. They need to find a mate. Uh, they starve to death. Uh, they have a lifespan. They age. Uh, they get old. Uh, they actually get big and fat and round and slow and sterile. And uh, so I trained during my PhD years in Sydney, Australia, learning about a disease called maple syrup urine disease. Uh, and you can guess what the symptom is of that disease. Uh, and I cloned three genes uh, in yeast cells that were identical, well, very closely matched to the human ones. And so I was of the mindset already that yeast could tell us a lot about human diseases. Um, and I had a fascination with aging. And at the time, no one was doing in a rigorous way the genetics of aging and longevity. The sterility of old yeast cells, uh, it turns out that these sirtuins these enzymes, normally they control a variety of cell functions, including mating. And during aging, they get distracted primarily by DNA damage. And they leave the place on the chromosome and go and help repair the DNA. But in doing so, and while they're distracted, the yeast cells are sterile. And that was the big finding in the 1990s. Uh, when I left MIT and started my own lab at Harvard, I wondered what could be similar about that process going on in our cells uh, and spent, have spent literally the last 20 years trying to figure that out. And now we know that these sirtuin enzymes, there are seven in our bodies, there are five in yeast, seven in ours, they're called SIRT1 to seven. The SIR part of it's interesting, SIR stands for silent information regulator number two. And the information is important, we'll, we'll get back to that of course. But what we now know is that these sirtuins can be activated uh, naturally, by being a little bit hungry or exercising, uh, caloric restriction uh, is one way. But we also know you can activate them with chemicals. There are natural and synthetic ones that we've worked on. Uh, and also, because these are, uh, at least three of them, control the way genes are turned on and off, we call this you know, gene expression, we think that the, the, the changes in gene expression as we get older, in part due to the distraction of sirtuins, among other things that occur, and it gets worse as we get older and we have more DNA damage distracting them. That's, I believe, the major driver of aging, certainly one of the major drivers.